this is Mike Goldberg, the voice of Bellator MMA. Great to be podside once again, set to enter the podcast right now. Our tale of the tape, the current undefeated champion of the world, Captain Hooter, defending his title once again. And I can tell you, no champion has ever defended his podcast this many times, well, since podcast began. Can he do it again? Let's find out. Here we go! It's Captain Hooter. Hey guys, good morning. How are you guys doing? You caught me right in the middle of my morning workout. I'm sitting here getting myself jacked up, getting ready for my big interview today with Remus. Remus Pintama. This guy's the head of the Suvernuver Foundation and one of the greatest cannabis fighters in Europe. He's been fighting the power for years. And he's got some new stuff he wants to talk to us about today. And it's gonna be groundbreaking stuff. So I gotta get my game on make sure I'm ready for the fight. This guy is amazing. Enjoy the interview, everyone. I'll see you when this thing's over. Ow. Yeah, baby, let's go. Fight the power. Fight the power. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Captain Hooter here, once again, high and alive and honored today to have, uh, I'm going to call him my friend. He's, he is a legend in Amsterdam. He's a legend in uh, the Netherlands. He's a legend in Europe. Um, uh, Renus. Uh, and my Dutch is so terrible and I hate pronouncing your name. I always say it wrong when I say your last name. Uh, Bein Tama. Is that close enough? Yeah, that's very close. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for coming and joining me today. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm feeling wonderful, man. And I, again, I'm honored to be able to have you here. I mean, um, you're literally called the Robin Hood of, of Dutch weed, of, of Dutch medicine, of Dutch oils, of Dutch uh, rebellion. You are a face now of the whole country of, of when somebody thinks about fight the power, you're the first name that comes up. And the, the, to see the look whenever your name is mentioned among all of my friends and everyone around the, uh, uh, in the coffee shops, you know, you are seen with great respect and reverence for what you've done uh, there in the Netherlands. And uh, can, can, in, in, a, in my, my audience here is a North American primarily audience, the United States and Canada. Um, there's a lot of people who know who you are, but not necessarily everybody that knows the story of the mission that you went on here. And uh, I was, can, can you take just a minute or two and kind of, I guess I told me, I asked Mila to do her elevator speech, you know, uh, try and give a, a quick little thing. Can, can you let the audience know a little bit about, you know, what this mission was and why you started it? Yeah, sure. Um, it's um, it's uh, basically coming from a prohibition. I'm a, I'm a weed grower. I've done this for the last 30 years. So I've been providing coffee shops with uh, with good as possible grown marijuana. And obviously in prohibition, you endure a lot of nastiness. And uh, I've had all of that three, four, five times. And it ended uh, being in a, in a shootout with uh, some people that trying to rip me off. And uh, that was like a wild, wild west situation where, where, where you really don't want to go, you know. And, and obviously, you guys in America know all, all about this shit as well. 
over here and not everybody from your audience, I think, uh, knows that we still live in a very prohibited environment over here in Holland. And uh, uh, this is this is this is a very real situation where the coffee shops are allowed to sell it, but they have to buy it in illegal way. So it's typical Dutch. I always say it. It's like uh, we allow you to smoke it, but you can't grow it and you can't get it. So you have to the coffee shop owners need to go into the illegal market to uh, go to guys like me that grow marijuana. And, and obviously there's a lot of criminals involved as well. So uh, it's a big money game. And this is where I'm coming from. So after this uh, this nasty shootout, um, I decided that this was not the way I wanted to grow marijuana. And uh, it, uh, it was basically two choices or join uh, an organization for protection or uh, quit quit growing at the scale I was doing. And I, 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 I did stop the, the, the growth for, uh, for the coffee shops and then decided to um, uh, open up a foundation where I would fight for legalization. And there's the interesting situation because uh, uh, at first we, we started in 2012 uh, just for um, a solution for coffee shop owners, how to get legality in, in the growth of marijuana. Uh, so I basically had a very simple idea, grow the weed with the foundation, uh, the profits, uh, after deduction of the cost, so obviously the profit from the foundation can be refunded to the municipal where, where we're growing for. And that way we have a, a, a transparent way of, of, of growing it, selling it, and tax can be, uh, can be gotten by the governments. So a very simple, uh, static way of doing it. And uh, I decided to, uh, uh, after I... I well, basically, you hit your, your head against a wall when you're trying to, to, to accomplish things like that. And uh, people in America uh, who were fighting for the legalization back in the 90s know exactly what I'm talking about. So I decided to um, uh, uh, be a bit provocative, basically, and uh, opened up uh, a 700 plant uh, grow facility where I did everything as much as possible as I could legal. So I had electrician, official electrician, official builders. I, I kept records about what I was doing. And then I decided to um, uh, ask the uh, media guy from television, Dutch television, to, uh, to come shoot it. And that was the first appearance, uh, what I did, and back then we were masked and formed voices and shit like that because of the prohibition. And, um, uh, well, no, no, no uh, big, uh, um, how do you say that? It, it was no surprise that, that after six months we got raided by police. And uh, there was obviously the plan as well to, to get it, get get busted, go to courts, and then tell everybody, this is what you should do to legalize. And uh, well, everything happened as planned. Uh, I had one crop, offered my profits to the municipals, and uh, they were kind of shocked that a, a criminal uh, came to them and said, well, I've grown some marijuana. Here is the profits. I want to share it with the poor people in your, in your city. So that, that, that was, that was uh, quite interesting, to be honest. And uh, that's where it all started. And uh, I then understand also the, the power of the media involved by the things I'm doing. So uh, uh, after I got busted and arrested uh, just for a few hours, we just handed over all the paperwork and said, well, we're ready to go to court. Let's, let, let's do it. It's not a, a secret. We've done it. Uh, let's open up a discussion. Police force was, was obviously surprised, but they had a good response to it as well. They said, well, this is a, an, interesting, an interesting move you're making here. So after that, I was waiting and waiting and waiting and two years passed and nothing happened. So then I decided, okay, well, I'm not gonna sit down and, and wait for these guys to do something. So uh, then I, uh, I got interested in what happened in America, in Washington and Colorado, that were the first two states, if I'm not mistaken, that, that went for the recreational legality, legality as well. So 
And this time area, we're talking about 2014, 2015-ish. Um, I saw uh, many comparisons by the fight that already have been taken place in America and then, then the Proposition 215 situation. So I start to study a bit more about what happened over there and how, how, how did you guys do that? How did you accomplish a legal situation for medicine, medicinal use of cannabis? And, and that was a very interesting one because up to that point, I've, I'll tell you the truth, I've, I've been very skeptical. I've been thinking, yeah, right, medicinal cannabis, for sure. You hurt your <laughs> finger, go to the dispensary, get your marijuana, and you have your fucking smoke all day long. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I, I was a skeptical motherfucker, I'm telling you that right now. So all of a sudden, a friend of mine came, and his father had severe uh, arthritis in his fingers and uh, rheumatic arthritis. And uh, he's read uh, an article online about oil, uh, helping him for relieve his pain a lot. And he asked me, can you, do, can you make oil? Well, I've obviously been making oil since 2000, uh, where I built my first closed loop uh, system. And I'm, I'm always been interested in, in, in playing around with cannabinoids and all kinds of extracts uh, just because I love it, you know? So I said, yeah, sure, no, 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 no biggie. I'm going to produce some oil for you. I made some BHO for him and uh, handed over a couple of grams of this oil. And after a week, he returned to me and he said, oh, man, thank you. And I couldn't fucking believe it. I said, what happened? He said, well, I halved my regular pain medication. I said, you're choking me. I said, no, this is what happened. So I said to him, OK, very nice for you, but now I'm now I'm getting triggered to, to this. So um, uh, can you please forward me another 10, 15 uh, 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 rheumatic pain uh, patients because I've got more oil and I want to see if it's just one lucky shot or if it's more people benefiting from this. So I got uh, within a couple of days uh, 15 other people uh, willing to use this. And out of the 15, I think uh, 80% of them had really good results with it. Some a little bit less, also some nothing. They didn't do nothing. But 70% of the people told me they benefited from the use of cannabis in, in, in extracts. So that, that really opened up my eyes. And uh, then, then I said to myself, well, if this is the case, oil making is not that big of a deal for me. Uh, let's see how far we can get it. So I, I re literally started a Facebook group and, uh, um, and that's still available with about 25, 30,000 people or something. And back then I just started it and, and I used Facebook Messenger to uh, talk to the, to the people who wanted to, to use it. And within a couple of days, I had hundreds of people asking me to help them with this, this extract. And then I saw a possibility because now I said, okay, now, now I can compare the situation a little bit with what happened in, in, in Cali with, with the Proposition 215, where, where they handed out a lot of marijuana to, to sick and needed people, and this way created uh, a lot of, of positivity around the legalization process. So I, I, I then started to, to, to see a lot of comparisons between those things, and... Uh, uh, before I knew it, within a month, I was working eight to 10 hours a day on my uh, addict on, in my own house, producing oil, uh, talking to people, uh, trying to figure out how to, how to break even. I didn't, was, was, wasn't looking for making too much money. I just wanted to break even at this point. And obviously, when you have 400 people uh, wanting oil, some money involved to create that shit, you know. So there, there I came with a with a, a system where I asked for donations instead of uh, payments for for uh, for the product, and I said, okay, uh, if if I can get enough money in my in my foundation to to keep producing it, it's good enough. And and sure enough, after after two months, uh, I I couldn't. I was it was too much for one person. So uh, then, then I, I, I uh, uh, looked around uh, to a couple of friends of mine, also from the industry, 
I said, guys, I, I'm, I'm onto something. I've got, I've got so many people interested in this product. Uh, maybe this is a good way to get some publicity for legalization for cannabis, you know? And this is where it all started. Then I was starting to look for, for a place where we could basically produce and, and talk to people. And there we saw the, the, a little wink to Spain where we saw the social clubs uh, in action. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm not, not too keen growing it, uh, but if we have a social club where we can open up for people to get information and to talk about this situation, that's awesome. And I can't stop that shit, you know? The, right. It's still a democratic country, so you, you, you're allowed to talk about shit. So <laughs> then I had to, 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 to solve the way of making it, so how, how you get enough product to make enough extracts. And obviously, uh, the 30 years of grow experience gave me a very large network of growers for coffee shops that all find this, this way, this approach of, of me uh, very interesting. And, and basically, they said, wow, this is awesome. I've got a, a, an aunt with cancer. I've got an, a, an uncle with, with, with a pain problem and on and on like that. And before I knew it, I was bombarded with, with high-class trim material. And obviously, you guys in America know the trim material is packed with trichomes as well and perfectly suited to make medicinal oils from that. So th th this was, was a very interesting time where we learned a lot about, because obviously we, we, we didn't know fuck all at that, that, that point, not as much as the extract experts in America knows. So I started to reach out to the to the to the community, and this is what 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 is really uh, grabbed my heart. You know, when you reach out and people see what you're doing or trying to do, all good advice and possibilities came came towards me, and people trying to help me make a better product, make it more clear, and well. Long story short, uh, now we have about uh, 30,000 people and about 15,000 people actively ordering uh, extracts from me. And uh, this all resulted in, in, a, court, it resulted in, a, in, a, in a pretty big court case uh, in 2021, where uh, they, they confiscated literally thousands and thousands of, of mail uh, things where I, I sent my, my products by mail. They got confiscated, and this is what started the whole, whole uh, court case. And um, yeah, this, this was an interesting one because I'm, I'm basically now selling, well, back then selling uh, uh, shitloads, shitloads of, 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 of extract to sick people only in Holland. But uh, yeah, the, 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 the justice department wasn't too happy about that. And uh, the health department said I was violating all kinds of rules, calling it a medicine, because that's the strange thing. In America, it's, it's, it's a medicine. But over here, it's a violation of the medicine law by calling it a medicine. So I basically got uh, into the court case. Why? Because I sent a warning uh, in a contraindication form with the extract for uh, don't take this oil and drive. Just the reg normal warnings that, that, that in America are, are just normal put down. Common sense. Yes, common sense. Don't take too much in one go because it will get you high. You know, all these logic things I, I've put down on the paper. And by doing that, I violated medicine law. And, and why? Because of this contraindication form that I basically said, watch this product because this has side effects. And therefore, the, the, the law said, you, you point it out as a medicine. So I got convicted. Uh, breaking the opium law because not many of, of you guys, uh, the audience, uh, probably know that the making an extract over here in Holland is a class A offense. It's similar like heroin. Cocaine. Heroin. Yes. So that it, it, by law it is. So 
it was a serious situation where, where you're facing charges, uh, even you're, you're helping people. And I got a lot of media coverage and even the mayor in the town where I'm, I'm doing it all was on my side and made a beautiful statement in the courts about he was willing to see if a, 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 a probable um, permit was uh, possible for, for my foundation. But it all went, went uh, got shot down by Justice Department based on my person, basically, and the way I presented this. Uh, I didn't ask for permits. I didn't wait for them. I just fucking did it. I said, well, I'm not going to wait for you, fuckers, because it's going to take me 10 years of talking, and you, you're going to be putting me in. I'm just going to fucking do it. If you want to prosecute me, go for it. So that all happened. And um, I, I lawyered up. I had uh, 30,000 people getting my back because they understood the situation that what I was doing was, was risky. And uh, I got convicted for it, found guilty by, by both offenses. But the very interesting situation occurred that the court say, this is an, uh, a different situation. You're not aiming to make millions of millions of, 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 of euros here. Uh, we see you're helping a lot of people in the community. Uh, uh, all these things combined with all the statements from the mayor, from, from the patients that, that, that I have been helping the last six years, resulted in um, a general pardon by the courts. So a guilty without punishment. And that was, that was uh, uh, for me personally, a, a victory, for the foundation a victory, but yeah. the conviction also meant I had to stop and I couldn't continue what I was doing. So basically everybody lost because of these 30,000 people now are uh, diving into the black market to get their, their, their products and that's, that's shitty. Yeah. So, so this is the situation where we uh, where we ended last year, November. So let me. I want to go back in time to the to the beginning because I have lots yeah. of questions about how this began. So when you had the original 300, 400 patients, can, tell me what kind of oil or general, uh, you know, was was this more of a, a Rick Simpson oil ish? Type well, of an oil? Well, yes, but I didn't use uh, the the ethanol or the. I just went from for the the BHO. I had my I had developed my own closed loop system, built it from scratch by my own hands with my nephew, and um, so that that was the device that we used in the beginning. Uh, but, but we didn't use vacuum ovens. We didn't know about mystery oils. We didn't know about vacuum ovens. We didn't know fuck all. You know, so it was a real rough snake oil as I see it now. But even with that, that product, uh, uh, we saw very, very promising results there. And obviously, when you then start talking to experts uh, in America, then you learn about mystery oils, then you learn about vacuum ovens, then you learn about solvents, about residues, about all these type of things that we didn't know. So we, had, we upgraded it really, really fast towards a production plant where we had a, a wall of vacuum ovens and a big uh, rota, rotation evaporators. And, and all. We, we tried to build it as, as good as possible in an illegal situation, also with the purpose that if they run in, they have to, to see the effort we'd be doing to make a clean product. And, and that resulted also in an, an HPLC and in, in analytical uh, computers. So we could basically see what, what the difference was in the product as well. So that's, that's, we, 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 we tried to get a high standard possible, but still in a prohibited situation. Exactly. And, you know, the other thing is that and one of the things that I was because I, I was at one of your first uh, Suvernuver uh, Foundation uh, locations, uh, uh, a young man, uh, Ragnar, yeah. who, uh, yeah, who uh, I had met when I first came in, uh, uh, brought me in and introduced me to the foundation. And uh, he he when I walked in there that day, I walked in and I sat there and looked right in the eyes of Rick Simpson. Yes. And I couldn't believe that you had you had brought in Rick Simpson in order to 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 tap his brain, didn't you? <laughs> you went in to learn no, what he no, learned. He just he just came in uh, to to say hi, basically, because he noticed me. We have seen each other on some some uh, congresses. 
and uh, obviously I was I was doing a bit the same he did without the 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 claims he's he's, he's putting out there. You know, that was a bit dodgy in my prohibited country. But now he came to see me just to say hi and to talk about event possibilities in the future. And uh, part of the marketing strategy I did over there, because I, maybe I, we have to go back to the first location. When I opened that, media jumped on top of that. And that resulted in uh, a thousand people adding on our database uh, don donation list. So all these thousand people needed product as well. So for me, it has been a roller coaster to uh, upscale my production process, um, also make it a lot better than when we started, obviously. And uh, it's been hard, hard work and a, and a big learning process to scale up to make production available for thousands of people. So after uh, two, three months, we had about 1,500 people uh, in the database asking for this product. Then I saw the, the situation, how it occurred. I saw that as soon as media got involved, I got some exposure about my project and everybody in that region jumped on me. So I said, okay, this is a nice one. So after three months, I jumped to the next uh, uh, province, we call it over here. It's, it's just a, a very small state, if you, if, you, if you want to see that like that. In Holland, we've got the country divided in 11 or 12 areas. And in my area, we started and then we jumped to the northern area. And from the northern area, two months later, I jumped to the middle of, of and that's where we met it as well, uh, if, I'm, if I'm correct. So every time that I made a jump and opened up a new social club, there was pure marketing uh, uh, of my, on my side because I, I, I saw that as soon as I opened in a different city, in a different area, the local newspaper started to, to bombard me with questions, the local television stations, and all these media coverage resulted in a couple of thousand extra people. So then I decided in, in one year, I jumped from the one area to another area to another area and gained a few thousand people every time I did that. So uh, in, in a year or one and a half year, I had eight social clubs all over Holland where I was providing information for sick people and talking about what's the possibility for them to use uh, cannabis extracts for their, their illnesses. So that, that was for me a, a marketing situation, but it was also a way to, and this, this is the co-parentment in America, they started to give away a lot of marijuana in the beginning, just to find positivity and, and enough people to support the legalization process. I did exactly that. I, I, I had people in front of me that has, has warned their children, don't use cannabis, it's a drug. You don't, you don't touch that shit. But then there they are in front of my door having, I, I call it the aging pains that, that everybody knows. Uh, you can't sleep as well. You ache when, you, uh, when you've been drinking, you recover for three, four days or something. It's just... It's just normal, normal situations that we all occur when you get older. And, and all these people that always had warned the children for not to go to the coffee shops, not to have been using cannabis, now in front of me, admitting this as well. And, and, and they say, yeah, well, I, I really want to try this. Uh, but, but is it addictive? Uh, is it a problem? So it was so funny when... And, and, this, and this was exactly what I aimed for. I didn't want the recreational people that already know about cannabis and smoke it for getting high and shit. I wanted to reach out to the people who are against it. And when you have a pain or you have a sleeping problem or, or whatever, maybe you have a chemotherapy session because of your, your cancerous problem, the cannabis will relieve you from the nauseousness, from the eating problem. So it helps you in general. Uh, and, and this was the most beautiful situation by reaching out so many different people. And I'm not joking you, I'm, I've been talking to customs officers that were obviously not in their uniform, but asking me for the product and then admitting to me that they're seizing these products by the borders many, many times, but they still want to have wanted to use this. I had police officers 
uh, in, in civilian clothes that, that, that said to me, well, I work with the police force, but my wife has a cancerous problem. I really want this oil. And there I understood the second part of this whole project, how powerful this plant is, because now all of a sudden they communicate with me. They're talking to me instead of throwing my ass in jail and, and, and <laughs> starting telling me how, how wrong I was doing shit, you know. So I decided already there, uh, a disease never discriminates. So I won't, I won't do that too. If you have an illness, I don't care if you're a criminal or a copper or a customs or a mayor, or I don't care. If I can help you and cannabis can relieve you from, from that problem, I will, I will supply you that. And that, that's, that's been a, a very curious situation if you understand what I mean. I, I've had a, oh, you know, I was going to say, you know, I can feel, you know, your compassion and your love. And, and one of the things I have to give you props for, again, was your really outstanding job you did in your HR department in selecting the people that you did to work at each one of those foundation locations. I, uh, I, was, I was able firsthand to sit and watch uh, Raj in his location uh, helping seniors, exactly what you were talking about. Uh, many of them walking slow with a bad back, or you yeah. could see the rheumatism or the arthritis in their hands and you know, coming in and, and tentative to walk in. And you had just the right type of person who was there, who was kind, compassion, uh, compassionate, uh, uh, patient. To, I, I watched him walk people over, sit them down, listening, listening to what the problem was and never over promising or never over saying, listen, this is and and being so, it was so wonderful to watch. And I, I was saying that you, I thought you had a tremendous advantage over a lot of the things that I'd seen even in the States as far as just just the amount of the, having that kind of one on one ability to, to have somebody really talk to you about this in a in a in a very compassionate way. I loved that. Um, the, now, the, here's the thing. Uh, you got shut down, uh, ultimately, uh, by you win, but you lose and your patients lose. And you are then stuck with a problem of how are you going to help your patients? How are you going to help your patients? Well, well as I said, um, it, in prohibited situations, you, and especially in Holland, it's, it's a gray area situation where obviously the fucking police knows that illegal growers supply in coffee shops. Everybody fucking knows that. Wait, wait, wait. Can we, can we also just, because this is something that everyone still doesn't know. And this is, and especially for all these people that are here in the United States and Canada that are watching, I know this, this is the part that maybe you're going, wait a second, this isn't really making any sense. No, this is isn't. Amsterdam. Yes, this, yes, is, this is the Netherlands, right? Yes. Where you go to get weed. Yes, no, right. it's, yeah, but this is not the deal. And, and in fact, it's much more severe and harsh punishments here than you could, than it was in, in, in what you would have back in the States. It's hardcore here. Again, just making the oils, having the oils, they treated that like opium, like heroin, like cocaine. And here's the other contradiction. And I think one of the reasons why you got the nickname as the uh, Robin Hood of, uh, of cannabis here is you can get oil in the Netherlands. You can buy a medicinal oil, can't you, from a big corporation. Yeah. at a very, very large price. Can you talk about that part of it? Yeah, well, uh, well basically what they, what they did over here in, uh, I think in around 2000, 2001, um, they, they gave out basically one permit to a, to a company called Bedrocan. And uh, they are the only uh, uh, licensed grower over here. And uh, that's a really strange situation, you know, why should you have a monopoly on that shit? And then, and then they say, no, 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 this is not a monopoly. Everybody can do it. So I've been, I've, I've been along that road as well to see what's up. Well, you can allow something, but then make so much legislation in front of it that you are not being able to, to get a license 
after two years of misery and putting in a lot of money, and obviously it's designed for you to stop your fucking efforts. So yes, everybody can ask for for a, a license, but the requirements to get it and to to do so are so fucking high. So it's, it's crazy. So they 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 have a, a, another smart way of putting their own. Uh, people in front of this can- cannabis industry over here. And I didn't like that whatsoever. I think in a, in a democratic country, you should have a, a normal uh, co- competition uh, kind of thing. You know, if you, if you make, I think it's healthy for, for, for a product to be made by different producers, you know, because I, for example, love my Indicas, but I know a lot of people love their Sativas as well. And, and why not not allow more people to 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 get their expertise in and to, to play around with that shit? Well, then then obviously they had the, the health department involved as well, and the health department decided that before you can smoke this crop, it needed to go under a rad, radio gamma radiation shit to make sure all the bugs and, and fungus are are getting killed. Well, dear Mr. Healthcare idiot, you're killing a lot of good stuff as well with that shitty radiation. So as soon as I tell this to people in America, to to my network over there, because that's growing as well, obviously, they can't believe that the government demands the bedrock and the the, the grower to put their products into this, this gamma radiation shit. Now, well, after that, they send it out to their own uh, 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 dispensary, a licensed dispensary. Well, then you expect at least a GMP facility where they they're making the medicine because they can call it a medicine. Eh? This is medicinal grow of cannabis going to the medicinal dispensary where you get your normal uh, prescription uh, drugs from 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 uh, the, the doctors, and these people using an ethanol extraction system, very simple. They don't even have clean rooms or GMP facilities, not necessary. So my way of production was way higher. In, way higher. Yes, in, 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 in safety, in, in health uh, care, because I felt that that, that that was a big pressure on me. I think, okay, now I've got tens, tens of thousands of people taking in my product, I better make sure I do, do do it as good as I can because I don't want these justice department idiots to start screaming that I'm poisoning people and shit, you know? So there was another big issue for me over there because as I told you, uh, I needed to get my product from the gray area, the illegal area from my network of illegal growers. So I don't have any analytical reports there. I don't know what I've been doing uh, with, for example, spider mites or other uh, issues that could occur during a growth, if they put used poison or et cetera, et cetera. So I had the challenge to um, put a, a protocol in between before I started using the, the trim material I got. So for example, we had a, uh, uh, um, uh, a couple of washes with with plain water on the extract. Why? Because the the the, the poisons used in, in 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 for the crops right, to kill the, the 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 infestation are most of the time water soluble. So we already saw that if we put water in between, then we hoped that that the water solubles of the toxics came out with the with the water and it was so we had to do a lot of extra safety in between just because we can't buy it legally with the the, the uh, in america you go to your analytic analytical lab and you make your uh, toxic report your heavy metals report your residue report okay. the whole kazam yeah i don't have that shit here but i yeah. still want want that so this is one of the main reasons why why I, I just fucking opened my own analytical lab as well and just uh, said, uh, okay, now I'm going to be testing 
for coffee shops and for everybody. Newspaper there, media coverage there again, because it's even worse as you guys think and know. I'm not allowed, a coffee shop owner is not allowed to test his product before he sells it. So you- So you, you, crazy, you, that is so crazy. So, so they are allowing over 40 years that everything that being consumed by us hasn't been tested whatsoever. Well, this is a situation, I think this is, they are the criminals. They need to be getting prosecuted for, for sending out uh, products for consumption without any test there. If you, if you go to food, if you go to water, if you go to, to whatever product you, you consume, there is a bunch of requirements you have to do, but not on cannabis. Let's just fuck it in there and smoke it in there and then cry very hard about us being criminals. You know, it's so but, fucked up over here. That, and, this, and, and now... And now you have a mayor who just came out and said they want to uh, they want to stop selling to tourists. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of these these idiots uh, around, and and the, the interesting question is really, why the fuck do they keep this idiotic uh, policy? Why the fuck are they so? They they're not open for any change. This is how it's been, and this is how it should be. And I can't understand it. Logic can't understand it. Nobody can fucking understand this. Yeah, over here in my country, they, they often think I'm a real crazy motherfucker. But it's also a, a big source of information. So if you allow the coffee shops, if you allow the grow shops where you buy the, the, the lights and the, the feeding systems and all that shit, if you allow all that shit, it's going to be very easy to see who's bringing the weed to the coffee shops to see who's taking the gear out of the grow shops so they don't have a hard time finding them people. So this way they create their own economy. It, I, I call it always, it's like uh, the, 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 the powerful world of suggestion. You know, they don't have to do shit by allowing these people to, to sell marijuana or sell the, 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 the products to grow marijuana. Because that's our easy uh, spots to, uh, to have a look at when you want to score some on, on people like me, you know? Yeah. So I think it's, it's a money problem and it's a system they created to catch criminals without too much effort. Right. There's a big story right now in the United States. I just read this morning. It says, do you want to learn, want to uh, decriminalize or uh, uh, what was it? Demonetize the police. He says legalize marijuana. That'll demonetize police just there by itself. Yeah, for, for, for here is, is, is still, uh, they have a different approach in Europe. So what they don't give you high, high punishment as in jail times, but they will make your life a living hell. Uh, you won't be able to, to find a house to, to live in. You won't be able to get a bank account. You won't be, so they make your life so impossible that, that it's maybe better to be in jail at some point, you know, because if you do something wrong, you do your time and then you continue again. You, you paid your price to society and then you, you start living in society again, as I always learned it in, in, my, in my old age at this point. But, but this isn't the case, you know, this isn't the case from, okay, you've done something wrong that's not allowed, here is your punishment, and now you can start over. That's fucking not, not happening, you know. They, it's like keeping you under pressure in a certain corner where you can't move and you are not allowed out anymore. And, and this is a big problem. And as they're now talking about legalization and all kinds of possibilities for the, the back door of the coffee shops, they call it, well... I've, 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 I take so long before they, 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 they even tried to do anything over here. I lost faith in that, in that situation completely. I think the only way to accomplish it is by, by uh, being, uh, uh, get some, some fighting spirits and, and, and get to fight to them. You know, not, not wait for please, can we do this? Or the politicians that talk and talk and talk about, 
I'm done with this fucking talking a long time ago. Yeah, you know, seriously. And, you know, I thought I, I, I'm actually kind of hoping that this this new call for for banning, you know, the tourists uh, might be a trigger. I'm hoping that it's it maybe people are getting tired of this and it's time to stand up and get up. Can, can you talk a little bit about uh, they they're they were doing a project. I think it's called the experiment which had to do where they 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 raffled out, or I don't know, I don't know if raffle's the right word, but they, there was a lottery, uh, so to speak, yeah, yeah, for could, 10 could, growers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what happened was the, 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 obviously the, 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 the scream for legalization and, and also a transparent uh, um, uh, uh, co coffee shop where you can tax the, the incomes and, and the outgoing profits and you can see everything, so it's it's out in the open and clear. Uh, that that was something that 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 they understood when America was legal, uh, doing the legalization process, and when it happened in Canada and in Uruguay and more and more countries. Obviously, that 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 triggered the politicians to do something. But they they started this whole shit in 2015, 2016. We're now 2022 and we, we don't even have one plant legal in the ground yet for a coffee shop, you know? So this says it all. Like if, you want, if you want to do something, do it. Don't fucking talk about it. And then, oh, let's see. Well, I said, well, stop being so arrogant. Talk to my American friends. They will explain in detail how to do it and how especially not to do it. Because you guys learned a lot from the legalization. A lot went went the good side, but also a lot went to shit. So there is a lot to be learned from the whole legalization process, talking to people who've been doing that. They say, oh, no, no. Sides. We're not we're not talking to Americans, we're not accepting American science, we're not accepting. I say, what? So an American doctor is more stupid than an European doctor? What the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> These people are on their high horses, this European elite kind of thing. I need to wake the fuck up. We're just fucking all human beings. Let's work together and accomplish yes, it. Yes, I. Instead of fucking being so competitive and so uh, uh, holding on to these old images, how it all started. Fuck that shit. I'm looking forward, not backwards, you know. There's a lot of shit in, in, in the past that I can, can talk about from all these fuckers as well, you know? We go hundreds of years uh, back in the past. So I, th I think they should, they, should, they should go off that high horse and, and just open up discussions with people who've done it. And then, then it should be not taking more than a year to, 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 to implement and, 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 and then just go for it. What would happen if 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 uh, a miracle happened and the government came down and said, you know what, we're going to decriminalize it all. We're going to go we're going to go Portugal. We're going to go Portugal, except we're also going to allow you to grow it and sell it. We'll just open up the whole economy and just let it go. What do you think would happen? I know I will have a, like a vacation then because then my my work is done myself. So I, I'm, looking for, I'm, I'm looking forward to that that possibility. But uh, obviously, my fight is to to free up the plant. That's the end goal. The the plant should be free, and you should be allowed. Obviously, you should some have some regulations around it. Yeah, you you can't allow. Oh yeah, just grow two thousand plants. That, that's a bit overkill, you know. But but as I see it. And also these, these details can be learned from the legalization process in Canada and America and Uruguay and other countries and Portugal as well. How to do how to do it and how not to do it. You know, so I love the fact that you are allowed in America for a certain amount of plants in a household, you know, so you you can you are allowed to, to produce extracts with it, you can smoke it. You can't sell it, I believe, but but that that wouldn't be my point. I would grow my own four or five special ones and do that a couple of times a year and have my own smoke, my own extract. And you're done. That that's this is this is what everybody I I hope everybody needs, you know. But then again, I also see the possibility that that there is uh, professionals needed for the people who don't want to grow that. So. There may be 10% of the market that love to do the work themselves, 
But a lot of people want the benefits, but not the work from it. It's like like being a farmer. The farmer makes the weeds, and and uh, afterwards the bakery gets it to make the end product, and and we just fucking buy in it. I see that too. You know, we're not all self sufficient uh, uh, as, as I would love to be. You know, and and therefore there is a big market, and also a lot of. Uh, 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 work possibilities uh, and economy, economy possibilities opening up by creating an industry like that. And, right. and, and, and education possibilities. Education possibilities. And, and, and yeah, as I said, th- what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build bridges. You have to see Europe as a United States of America, where it's divided in all kinds of states. We've got that here yep. in countries. But basically, it's the same system. The only shitty part is that we don't have one president. We have 12 of these idiots thinking they know best, you know? <laughs> so, so so that's the worst part of Well, excuse my, my, my true. language. Yeah, that's but true. It's my heart, you know? This, so, so we have to fight 12 different countries with 12 different opinions. With, and that, therefore, shit doesn't happen. Because if you have something in your own country... There's a neighbor country, neighbor state, as I like to compare this. Neighbor state says, oh, no, no, we're not going to allow this. And this is the interesting part, for example, with, with the hemp industry. The hemp industry is, is kind of regulated at this point. They allow a certain amount of THC in the hemp, and uh, they, they have some regulations that are in place. And, and it's it's pretty big in, in Eastern Europe. It's it's really packed with American and, and Canadian partners uh, uh, growing really, really large scale uh, hemp. And, and I understand that. Uh, what happened in the last years is that we see that we have had an, a big overproduction as, as in America as well. We, we, we saw prices drop in from the CBD products and the crystals like crazy, like like factor 10, factor 20, almost down in prices, you know. So if you see that that in Europe, they have guidelines for the, the growth of hemp. So they have a limit for the amount of THC in the biomass, 2%, 0.2% allowed in the plant material, in the biomass. And... Um, uh, that, that gives a little bit of room uh, to play around with. So uh, another another one of the, the, the products that, that is pretty big on the European market is the, the, the legal CBD oils below the zero, 0.05 or 0.2% of THC allowed. But it's everywhere this, here. This is a big, and that's throughout Europe everywhere. But also this is... Uh, was a booming industry, but there is a, a too much too much product on the market at this point. So you see prices dropping everywhere, people falling over with the companies as well, you know. So it's an interesting time to 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 watch all this. And I'm talking about this to you because uh, obviously uh, we talked about how it stopped last year. But I couldn't just sit down, and 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 so I started to uh, rethink about what this this justice department guy and this this, uh, uh, this court guys really said to me. They said to me one of the things that I fell short. That's that's how they say it. Huh? I fell short by looking into uh, legislation what was possible at this point, and that 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 was like a little pinpoint on, on in my arse, you know, that you do, what the fuck, you bastard, why do you fucking say that? So I, I decided to have a good look in what's in these laws. And there you come in a fucking gray area again. Because European laws say all extracts on cannabis are forbidden, not allowed, illegal. But if you under... 0.2% THC, and if you under a dose of a maximum dose of 160 milligrams of CBD, we will allow health stores or other uh, stores to sell this product legally. 
I said, what the fuck? Why the fuck do you, excuse my language, I'm not thinking about that. That's why, okay. wh why should you put a percentage on the THC as a non-absolute number and an, a milligram on the CBD? Why the fuck do they uh, do that? Um... And then I thought, well, if, if this is the case, then I see possibilities because percentage can be, can be played around with, with volumes, as you understand what I mean. Yeah. If, if, if you up the dilution on the same amount of milligrams of THC, percentage-wise, you will have a legal product, but there's still the same amount of cannabinoids there, the 100 milligrams. So uh, a small example, one of my oils yes. was a, a, a basic oil, I called it, a 1% THC, a very low targeted for, a, well, here you are, check it all out. I just threw them on the table, gave them away for people to try yeah. it. 1% of THC, 100 milligrams of THC diluted in 10 milliliters uh -huh. of MCT oil of the, or coconut oil extract. So that's 100 okay. milligrams in 10 milliliters, 1%, right. illegal. But if I up this dilution with the MCT tea oil from 10 milliliters to 200 milliliters times 20, <laughs> then all of a sudden the amount of 100 milligrams THC is 0.05% <laughs> and a legal product. <laughs> Obviously, I don't want people to eat 200 milliliters of oil a day. That's a bit no. overkill, but then you get all oh, other different wow. problems. So I went, to, really to, I went to some, some friends in my network, and, and they are American friends uh, from, from, uh, from California. And uh, that's, that's very close to Tommy Chong. And that's that. Phil Mann, and uh, Phil Mann, uh, the, he uh, directed me to a Pittsburgh company, Hemp Synergistics. Very nice guys, very competent guys as well. And these, I asked these people, can you make a water-soluble product? And obviously, this is not, not real high science in America, as we, we know, as I know, the edible market in America is huge. So they said, yes, obviously, we can, we can try and make a formula. So then I started to say, okay, well, then I'm going to give you analytical reports from the oils. I've been giving my database for the last six years, and I want you to reproduce this using distillates and isolates. And this is exactly what they did. So after a month of, of talking to them, uh, we, had, we had this possibility. And then I said, okay, I don't want to aim blind. So let's hold it. Let's, let me get 300 people out of my database uh, from the people who use the oils from in the past. And I will ask them if they want to participate in an efficiency test phase where we can try and see the results a little bit more than just words because I love my American buddies, but I always, <laughs> I always want to see cold facts on the table before we go yeah. any further. So this exactly is what happened. Um, uh, we made three formulas. One was uh, a THC CBDA one-to-one water-soluble all within European guidelines, so 0.05%. We made uh, uh, one uh, formula that was based on the analytical report from my own products. And we made one that was a very high THC with very minor uh, other cannabinoids in there. So these three formulas we, we have been sending out uh, uh, first of all, I ordered them, of course, in, in, from, from my Pittsburgh buddies and, and, and see if we, if we could get it so legally by mail, if this loophole I found, if it would really work. So I mm. paid my invoices, paid for the whole Kazam, and then they shipped it by plane. It landed in Germany. Customs, look at it. Perfect. Came to Not Holland. It. Customs look at it. Oh, souvenir, let's stop that shit. So they, no. they confiscated it. 
I had to give my 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 copy passport, uh, 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 all, all details of my company, and I had to um, uh, put some codes there, an HS code and an EORI code, all kind of codes that's necessary for them to see what we're doing. So and an ingredient list, of, of course. So minor uh, uh, contain traces of uh, natural occurred, natural derived hemp cannabinoids. You know? Yes. And and so we put everything there, and then after a week they just released my water, and we could um, enter this test phase. And as we speak, uh, we just finished this test phase, yeah. and we had yeah. amazing results. Really amazing uh, results. Okay, so so what you're saying is essentially that you're going to be able, in in theory, that you're going to be able to have patients be able to switch from the oils and now be able to get their same type of effects of medications, but from the water. And even better because water, the bioavailability of water makes it more efficient and with an effect of 1.7. And the way my Pittsburgh friends, they have uh, have a very smart way of presenting the cannabinoids to the body. So they call it a Trojan horse. And that's an interesting system because when you take a large amount of cannabinoids and you eat that, your body will not accept that as a, as a, a, a safe product. Hey, your whole body is a computer that does scanning by what you're eating. So as soon as it sees a, a, a substance that is not uh, uh, recognized as a natural fee, uh, food or, or drink, they will start sending these enzymes to break the product down. These P450 enzymes sent down from the liver. Well, well, I'm, I'm not thinking this myself. I'm, I'm being told. I've just yeah. learned this out <laughs> of my head. Yeah, no, 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 that's good. But these, these enzymes make sure that the, the unnatural substance in your body gets broken down before it enters the vital organs and shit. So basically what happens if you eat the cannabinoids, your body breaks it down up to 90%. So you only have 10% of the, of the values inside. And this is also based on a bit the, the, the similar with the Rick Simpson oil, where, where you have to do right. a, gra a gram a day. That's why they have to take so much of it. Now, exactly that. Because mm. if you, your body breaks down 90%, therefore you need to add. add. So what did, these, did my Pittsburgh friends think of? And it was a smart way of being used in feeding uh, beverage industry more than, more than once. They... they disguised the cannabinoids by a patented process by now, uh, where, where they open up the helix structure of a starch and they hide the cannabinoids inside. And then with a, with a procedure, they close up the helix structure again. So when you drink my water, the body won't recognize the cannabinoids. So it enters the lower guts, then it opens up and surprise, surprise, there is a shit <laughs> of cannabis. So, okay, so now, the, can you also dose this yeah. properly? So, so what, we now, what we're now trying to do is, is uh, as, as Rick and, and other suppliers always say, you, you drop by drop. We don't use drops because we opt the volume. So one drop is about similar as 1.4 milliliters of my water. But... Because of this delivery system and because of the bioavailability of water, it really means that it means five or six drops uh, compared to 1.4 milliliters. So oh. this product could be a real game changer. First of wow, all, yes. First of all, I'm not breaking opium laws anymore because my my production is being done in America, where it's all become legal. Second of all, I work with a hemp company, not a THC company, on purpose, <laughs> because hemp is accepted in Europe and there's guidelines there. So I can easily allow to certain products, not all of them, are allowed in your Euro in European market. So all these advantages gave me a little smile, of course, because now I can start again. And yeah, and you've and you're not breaking any rules. You're 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 following all the rules. Well, I'm I'm bending them a little bit towards how I think it's possible. But if they allow for the last 15 years all these CBD products, this will is exactly the way they implant they import it. So they 
buy it, say, okay, dilute it till 0.05% because in Holland, we are more strict than in Europe. In Europe, it's 0.2. In Holland, 0.05. So if they do the, the oils below that, 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 that number, Thousands of liters in little bottles of 10 milliliters are taken in and over the border all legally. So what's the difference what I'm doing? I'm doing it with water, you're doing it with oils. Yeah. It's so a... if they stop me, my lawyer team is waiting for that shit because then a lot of CBD sellers have a big problem too. Yeah. Oh, man. I love this. Tell me about some of the feedback. What? Tell me about some of the feedback from the people that have been taking the medicine, and what kind of th- what kind of uh, uh, issues? I mean, because it, it's water. So I would, for people that were using anything that was topical, uh, this is this is not a topical. This is you're drinking this, right? Yeah. Well, first of all, we have to be very careful with this one because, as I told you, I've got. Uh, uh, already one violation of the medicine law behind my myself. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah my lawyers advise me not to go too much in indications or sicknesses. I rather talk to my friends telling me that, mm-hmm. as, as you understand what I mean, because you are and, allowed to say so. whatever you want. So. But for me, there is a, a like a little loop on my 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 beautiful head. I always say that they they focus <laughs> that they. If I move a little bit too much to the left, they attack me. If I move yeah. a little bit too much to the right, they fucking attack me. And I said, I don't care much about their attacks. They don't hurt me. They bounce off, you know? But, but still, uh, the way they fight with me is giving me big fines for shit. And uh, yeah. a, a fine for breaking the, the medicine law can go up to 5 million quick. And, yeah. and I, obviously, that's a good way to kill us as well. So yeah. I don't want to get into details about what indications. I fucking know them. But I will not yeah. say it. Yeah, understood. The, uh, uh, the 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 problem with the uh, coffee shops, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go background just a second here, and yeah. with 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 Amsterdam in general. Um, and you know, I wrote the book, 168 coffee shops, went to all of them. The, uh, there are too many coffee shops, in my opinion, there's, there's a lot of just ones that, that, yeah, there, 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 they could be done, but the, the interesting thing about what you were just talking about a second ago, when you were talking about the experiment was that essentially the government became partners with the growers, Correct. So they were going to become the grower. No, not really. What? what no. How? How does that? How no. did that work? Okay. The politician said we need to to think about the back doors of the of the the coffee shops. We need to make it legal at some point. So what they did, they they basically handed out a raffle that every every company could register there with a plan to grow marijuana for the the the, the coffee shops, and. Nobody knows how, but they selected 10 of these companies and said to them, if you are, uh, so there's all restrictions there. You, you can't have a criminal record. You can't be busted with marijuana. You can't. So, so you, you exclude everybody from the branch in one go. And Which is exactly the opposite of what they just did in New York, right? In New York, they gave the first permits to the people that had already been convicted of a of a cannabis conviction. And that's so what, what should be done. So this is why I'm I'm telling you, what they need to do is they need to get from this fucking high horse, go up to America and talk to the people. What's up? Because and and oh, I can't explain it other than a, 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 an an idiot arrogancy from these lawmakers and and politicians over here because it's so easy to get this information you know i i get this information everybody who can use a computer and goes online can get this information it's not like a public uh, secret or something you know so it's one of the frightening things it's one of the frightening things in every country where they where you're fighting a battle like this mm -hmm. in 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 canada you've got you know dana larson he's fighting against government and a lot of times when you when you talk to the politicians they know little or nothing about the plant 
There or anything about how it works. There Same thing in Jamaica. Jamaica, it's a, it's you know, you've got it mostly a, a legalized kind of system where they've got the herb houses, but the 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 government is still and the officials and the people that I spoke to knew very little about the plant itself at all. Um, no education, no, uh, and if you don't understand or under know what the plant is about, how could you possibly make decisions about it? Well, there you go. And the, the, this is why we are frustrated over here. And this is also why I decided to, to fight in a different way than everybody else, because I'm fighting an, another battle and I'm, I'm, I'm choosing my battles. I've learned in the past how to fight this, this, this whole system. And I've got a lot of assistance from, uh, from my American friends because they've been fighting basically the same wars. So I saw all these problems with banks you guys had over there. Guess what? I've been compromised three times by my bank because I'm selling illegal products. So there's a law over here that I need to stop immediately. So, well, okay, well, now you have to stop because you're not, you're not justice department, you're a fucking bank. You know? So you can say it's not allowed, but then first of all, you need a conviction, yeah? Without a conviction, you can't stop this shit. I will tell you exactly what I'm doing. Here is tens of thousands of sick people getting oil extracts of me. And I will stop if the, if the uh, Justice Department and the courts convict me for this. Okay, here's your bank account back. Yeah. But, <laughs> but after three times, and I had this conviction, then it was no, not, not, no room for errors anymore. So I, I said, okay, you know, I, I will quit production labs. I will quit selling illegal substances uh, because you've been giving me my bank account back. I will keep my word and do exactly the same. I will do exactly what they won't expect me to do. Be transparent, truthful, and honest to everybody. And that's, and that's the other thing about this whole this whole mission from day one, from the day that I, I first learned about your, your mission has been as transparent as possible it was ridiculous you got you have been uh, expecting this battle when i sat with you you looked me in the eye and said they're going to come after me i know they are and I i'm know. ready for this i'm, I'm ready for it. this battle yes, and you were ready it. i was ready i am ready and i will be ready yeah you know there's people we talk about warriors there's people when you know that will end up in a battle but then when the when the heat comes there's those that will go down into the ditch and there's those that get up and start charging straight ahead. And you've been charging fucking straight ahead since the day I met you. And I, again, I have so much respect for every, every step that you've taken here. I'm excited about this new product. What are you calling it? What's it going to, how is well, it, how are people going to get it? This, this is where, where my love for Rastafarians comes, comes into place. We called it idle water. The idol yeah. from Vital from Jamaica. I, I really needed to, to make a little touch towards the, the healing of the nation, as Bob Marley put it out already a long time ago. So I thought it would be appropriate to call it the idol water. Uh, at, at this point, I obviously now I have had two publications in the in Dutch newspaper, national newspaper, where I been completely transparent as well, challenging them basically, to come after me again, because I'm, I said, this is my product, this is what I'm going to do, and come, come stop me. Yes. <laughs> and, and this is an interesting situation, because now, obviously, we have uh, the first big shipment coming up. I won't tell you exactly when, for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but it is a, a, a 2,500 liter this time. So that's a, a, about five kilos of THC uh, divided in 10,000 bottles of 250 milliliters. So when a co quick calculation gave us, then we have a 0.05% allowed THC in Europe. So at this point, I'm not aiming Holland anymore because we, have, we are one Europe. Uh, uh, according to, I'm, I'm paying go. my taxes to, I'm paying money for Europe somewhere. I don't know why, but I'm doing <laughs> that. You know, so one Europe is, is, is like one United States of America. Holland is a tiny dot over there. I understand they're coming for me. I understand they will shut me down some way. That's all strategy. 
Now we're aiming much bigger than, than, than just Holland. I'm basically using this whole second start of the foundation as a big marketing and promotion uh, situation that I will use to, to put this product out into Europe. Because there is a funny thing. You can shut me down for in Dutch law, but you can't change European law being one tiny dot on the European map. You know what I mean? So the idea, yeah. the expectation is they will fight me, they will find a way, they will stop it. Fuck that. Then I'm going to do one step over the border, stop every action over here because I'm an abiding citizen. Don't forget that. If you don't, if you tell me this is not allowed, I will stop immediately. But I think I found a nice legal product as you guys do your CBD, I do my THC. So what, what, what's the difference? Wow, this is going to be exciting. This I, is going to be exciting. This time, this time I, I don't start with an illegal production. I don't have illegal growth. I work with high class legal situation, hemp industry, America. And now they're going to tell me I have shitty products. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm doing fuck all. Talk to my friends in America. I'm going to force them to talk to you guys over there. Because there's where the production is made. <laughs> you want to know anything? Talk to them. Talk to these guys. They're the ones. I love it. I love it. You're you're you you set up a beautiful, beautiful little box here. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fantastic. Um, I, when when will patients be able to get the water? When do you have a time frame? Well, or we, we know? try to to, uh, to have the water available by four twenty, but um, uh, obviously we now expect that there at least will be a, a firm check up on my my idle water when it when it arrives to the country, and then basically means is that they need to analyze it and to see that that we basically are within these guidelines and below the 0.05 percent. So uh, I count on my American partner that uh, that we have uh, good numbers there and uh, uh, right. that they can't they can't they can't hold it back, you know. And as soon as they they will do that then I won't talk to them no more. I will send my lawyers in to do all this fucking shit. We've got, we are prepared this time. And, and this is the big advantage with last time. Last time I knew I did something that's not allowed by law. I knew I wasn't allowed to make extractions. I knew I couldn't take the illegal marijuana from illegal growth. But I did it anyway. This time I didn't do fuck all. I'm not just <laughs> buying and selling and making sure I've got the best product available for my customer service. And, 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 and if they don't allow that, well, we're going to stomp them this time. We're going to be fun. This going to be rules, really fun. Rules are, rules are fun until you, they're used against you. And then it's all of a sudden a whole different game. I, I, I love I this. Did, I didn't make the rules. They did. You know, it's their yeah. rules. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, there is a, you know, when you're fighting the good fight um, and everyone knows that you're fighting the good fight. Uh, to me, I, I couldn't have a better representative fighting this fight than you. Uh, I've, I've mentioned you today. I said you are uh, one of the hardest, toughest men that I know. And you're also one of the kindest uh, and wisest. Uh, you, you've you've been through the battles and you've learned a lot from from the battles and from and from all of the, the the people, the experts that you brought around you. You didn't pretend that you didn't know things you didn't know. You went out, got the education, you got the experts around you and you went and bought the equipment. And, and you know, your laboratory in there looks like better than anyone that I've ever seen, except for maybe in the United States. It was outstanding. And uh, uh, again. I'm 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 so honored uh, to know you and I'm proud of everything that you're doing and I appreciate everything that you're doing and if you decided to to run to be the prime minister or the the mayor of Amsterdam you would have my vote in 2 seconds <laughs> no politics for me, mate. No, no 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 yeah no politics for me that game we're not going to play that fucking game you know <laughs> I'm, I'm, raised, I'm raised from the streets and I'm, I'm loyal to where I'm coming from, you know. This is also the whole, the whole 
I, I am who I am. I can't pretend to be something else. You know, I, I, this is yeah. this is what you see. This is what you get. And and take it or fucking leave it. I don't I don't care much. You know. And and yeah. and this is what I will be till my last breath. I, I'm devoted to to uh, for my own personal reasons. Uh, my personal reasons are are a bit different than everybody thinks. You know, I'm I'm for me the whole legalization and and the medicinal cannabis is is a, is a tool because it's basically the the bigger fight that 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 we talked about a little bit in 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 this conversation about uh, who's being the real criminal and and what needs to be changed in the system. I think I think that, that that's that's the real that's the real fight we have in not not because you. I'm fighting my battles in the area where I'm. I feel comfortable in because I know a lot from that, and I experience a lot from that. I know how I get fucked by police doing this. I know. I know what's coming for me, but obviously you have this situation in multiple areas in society, and it isn't just cannabis. It isn't just legalization. It's a complete. Uh, wrong setup from society, basically, you know. So I use my my own expertise area, and I try to bring it in a project that is funny, but very serious, and a lot of people seeing how the fuck is this possible? They open up their eyes because I'm doing this. So I don't need to tell anybody what's going on. I'm just being completely transparent to everybody. And then they can decide themselves who's truthful and who's not. Because I don't yeah. underestimate people's uh, intelligence. I know that if you if you get get beat 20 times, you remember who fucking held that stick, mate. You know? And I remember who held that stick. And, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of- so much respect, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to chat with me today. You're welcome. And uh, uh, we will put uh, up all the information on uh, how they can find uh, Suvernuver and uh, your information for uh, all of your socials. And uh, I wish you nothing but uh, the most positive energy with all of these battles going forward. And I can't wait to get uh, my first bottle. I got to come and sign up and become a patient. <laughs> I'm ready. Well, I can send it throughout of Europe, so I can send. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's fantastic. So I should no probably be setting that, up man. a distributorship here. Is what I should be doing. Well, exactly. <laughs> what are we talking about that later situation, my friend? No problem. Thank fantastic. you very much for this opportunity, and I want to say hi to all the warriors in America and in Canada and everywhere, and uh, keep up the good fight, but stay positive. That's the main message. Yes, I. Thank you, my friend. After I listen to Renus, I feel jacked up. I'm ready to go. Keep yeah, it clean on, at all times. Yeah, Protect yourself go. at all times. All right. And what yeah. I say, you must obey. That's right. Good let's go both of Let's go, big man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The belly looks a little weak. Yeah, come up here. Good night. One, two, three, four. Yeah, man, listening to five, Renus gets me jacked six, up. I'll tell seven, you what. Eight. Like I said, different kinds of warriors, people that come at the people and people who just sit back. Oh, your lip looks a little fat there, big man. The belly's still there. Oh, sorry. One, Didn't mean to do that. Two, three, All right, four, guys, I think that's five, the end of our show. Six, oh, wait, seven, maybe it's not the eight. end of our show. Hit it! Everybody, how you doing? It's Chef Danny Raposo, aka the Stoner Chef Canada. It's time for that worldwide bud report for Mr. Captain Hooter. Today, this week, and today, I am smoking a great strain that is very uh you know underrated. People don't really talk about this, but I love it. It's an amazing strain, and I use it for more body uh, than mind. 
So I'm going to flip this around. Uh, this came from Quebec, uh, Oka Resort, uh, Reserve, uh, Indian Reserve, and the uh, dispensary is Mary Jane's. Are you ready for this, people? <laughs> it is. Bang! Charlotte's Web. That's right. A 60% indica dominant strain with one, sorry, 1% 1 THC, 17% CBD and 0 0.25 CBN. Look at that beautiful bud. It's a fantastic, beautiful taste. Uh, once again, from Mary Jane's in Montreal, Quebec. It is absolutely amazing for edibles. I love smoking it uh, before I hit the, the bed. Uh, it gets me nice and relaxed, and it gives me a nice sleep uh, at night. So, thanks again, and that's what I'm smoking today for the Worldwide Bud Report. Have a great day, everybody. Ciao! Hey everyone, it's Danny again. Thanks, Cap, for having me on the show. I want to talk about edibles today. Um, a lot of people don't really know like how cool edibles can be and how they can be in a medicinal kind of way or even just a recreational way. I want to talk today about Medusa. This is actually a product that's made here in Missouri by an awesome company called Nuthera Labs. This is more of like an artisan type of chocolate. And this brand is actually, this, this flavor is actually called Hazelnut Crunch. And these things are fancy, check this out. Uh, it's like Willy Wonka up in here, okay? Beautiful 200 milligram per bar, 20 milligrams per piece. And these are one of the best ways I like to wind down after a rough week. Definitely a nice body high, definitely very relaxing. And if you ever come to Missouri, definitely check out Medusa Chocolates. Hey, stoners and vapors. I'm Herb, and this is my butt report for this week. And today I am going to talk about cookies, the strain. And I got this from uh, one of, in my opinion best coffee shops in Amsterdam and that is coffee shop the plug so let's dive right into it so the strain we're talking about is cookies and this particular nug was a bright green flower with deep brown pistols it was nice and dense uh, but it had just enough give when squeezed it was well dried uh, had a nice clear snap of the branch the trichomes were small, but there were many of them. Um, unfortunately, most were clear and only half of them were opaque. The aroma was not as strong as I hoped. Uh, maybe even a bit under par, but it was still very present. The highlights were sweet, buttery, almost coffee-like. I don't really know what kind of terpenes I should uh, uh, put in that category. I, I'm still trying to figure that out. But uh, going on the undertones, which were very floral and spicy with a hint of orange rind, that would indicate that the possible terps in this strain would be caryophylline, uh, maybe some uh, linanol or some uh, terpinaline, maybe some geraninol. The effect that I was feeling was very much relaxed and stony. I definitely don't recommend... Uh, vaping this while you're at work because you're definitely going to feel a bit drowsy but i would give it a solid seven that was my butt report for this week i hope to see you next time bye thank you for listening Now it's the end Ladies of and show. gentlemen, with the match ending in the first round, your winner by technical knockout, Captain Hooter. Thanks for watching the show, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow with another great warrior, Dana Larson from Canada.
<laughs> it's Captain Hooter.